how about now? Do we have some sound now? And Jen is here. Hello. Um, I think I have hit all the right buttons now. <laughs> yes, we have sound. Excellent. Okay. So I'm, I'm doing a, in the background, I, I had I pre-cut a ton of rainbows for another project. And I thought, well, you know what? This might work tonight. But Lord knows I could not find it when I needed to. So now, I love to fussy cut, and I find fussy cutting very helpful to de-stress. So while I give it a minute for people to perhaps find me, since I've not gone where I said I was going to go, I'm going to do a little uh, fussy cutting while we wait, and then I won't have to do it later, because um, that will help me de-stress from the joys of technology. Wow. There we go. We're giving you a, lesson, a free lesson today in how to fussy cut. Wow. These are actually... Um, I did buy the dies in time, and then they went on back order. And I think it's possible they might actually be back. Today, a bunch of stuff came back in early. Um, so it's possible they are back, but uh, I haven't had a chance to go get them. Hello, Dana. So this paper is super easy, just a fuzzy cut. So that's what I've been doing. So look at this. I actually have this many toys <laughs> all ready to go for tonight. I was all prepped, ready to go, and then technology just was being the little you-know-what that she can be sometimes. So, to start over again, <laughs> um, because that's just how things have been going, um, I have, oh, there we go, I've lost all my comments. Uh, hi, I'm Tracy, <laughs> your friendly neighborhood paper pusher, and uh, tonight we're going to do 3D Thursday. I figure, I've got my Thursdays figured out that... That uh, the last Thursday is going to be my paper pumpkin day. Um, but I love, love, love to make 3D projects. And so I thought, you know what? I think at least one Thursday a month, possibly two, we're going to make it 3D Thursday and we're going to make 3D projects. And this is actually what started the whole thing. Was my, uh, one of my favorite uh, Christmas treats. I can't stop playing with my tear and tape tonight. It's very distracting to me. Um, so this is my snowman hat. And in it is uh, hot chocolate and some little mini marshmallows there in a, in a tube. And a little candy cane and you tie them all in a thing and away you go. So I love this and it's fun. And you can put lots of things in here. This, this one has enough room in it that you could pop in some cookies, some chocolates. Um, it actually will hold a fair bit. We're going we're gonna to play later and see just how much we can cram into one of these things. So... We'll see, but so I had the I had the uh, the Christmas one, and I was trying to figure out what to make for for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, let me just catch up here on what I'm doing. There we go. Okay, um, and so I thought, well, I wonder if I made this hat, and I'm curious to see what else I could make. I figured I could if I if I got super creative, and I might do that one of these days. Um, maybe a steampunk kind of hat. I'd have to think about how to make that all work. And how to beat it up a little bit, but because this is this is very streamlined, and you know, but uh, and a, and a leprechaun hat, but there must be other hats. So curious, what other ideas people have for other hats, or or even if it's not a hat, like so, if you take this out, and I mean, you see the basic shape of it. Um, what else could I? I almost thought I could make it into like a pot of gold as well, but you need some kind of a base. But I think if I I don't know. Come up with some ideas. Tell me how you're going to make this work. <laughs> Tell me what I should be doing. But what I'm going to do, now that we're like a half an hour late for what we were trying to do, I'm going to show you just how easily these hats are made and how, and a couple little tips as I go, and then we're going to try and see if it works for a leprechaun. So here's basically what you need, is your little base. And the reason I cut two different sizes is because um, I like to up, upcycle, I think that's the right word, what is this one? This one's just over three and a half. I like to upcycle um, things. And what do I have most of? <laughs> empty glue dot rolls and empty embellishment containers. So this is what I tend to use. And some of our embellishment containers are deeper. The older ones used to be deeper. And those ones are really good. You got a really good solid base on those. 
But basically, with a, an empty embellishment container, you could make two hats. And then when I ran out of those, because I was making these for my son's school one year, and I made enough that the entire, like all three classes of, I think it was grade five, could make them. So I needed like 60 of them. And I did not have 60 empty con uh, containers, but I did have a whole bunch of these. When I finish a glue dot roll, and you'll see I'm about to finish another one, um, I, I always keep these because uh, I don't have any samples here. So when I make Christmas ornaments, if you put this on your on your table, you can set like the plastic Christmas ornaments you're working on. They'll sit very nicely in here. Some of our domes and stuff that we use for crafting, they will sit nice. And it just gives it somewhere to hold. So I never throw these away. I have a whole bag of these somewhere. Because I just throw them in a bag thinking, you never know. So when I ran out of embellishment containers the one time, I used these. And really, as long as you have something... I thought about toilet paper rolls if you wanted to make much smaller ones. But toilet paper rolls are so thin, I'm not sure how well... I guess if you used a hot glue gun, it would work. I tend to stay away from the hot glue gun, because I burnt myself enough already. Um, because you, you have to be able to attach this to the base. And toilet paper rolls are so... They're, they're so thin. This one at least has a good edge on it. So I don't know... I assume it would work, but I don't know for sure. So... We have a base. In this case, this base is just over three and a half inches. Um, and I was using, I put it away already. Look at me being efficient. Um, I just use my big circle dies. And so this gives just a bit of a lip. If you have too much of a lip, um, they they tend to get manhandled a bit more. Like it's great if they're just sitting on the table, but if they get craft fairs or if you're handing them out to people, the more you pick them up in that, the more this is going to bend. So I figured that you didn't want to have the brim too wide. But, well, I guess you could make Easter bonnets. Ooh, see there, now, now I'm going to counteract what I just said. If you made this brim much wider, and this thing, instead of being two inches, you could just make it like an inch, so it looked more like a like a lady's, you know, spring bonnet hat, then you could make these into Easter bonnets. Ooh. Ooh. Or flowers. They don't even have to be hats. Oh, see, there you go. The more I ramble, the more it pops into my brain. <laughs> okay, well, who knows what we might try next, then. So... I guess, I guess in that case, what I was going to say is just cut a size that is just slightly bigger than whatever you're using as the base. But really, cut whatever size you want, because you can make it into whatever you want. In this case, though, that is what I was doing. So this is about a half an inch bigger than this base. And one of the few times that I actually use white glue, because my go-to, tear and tape. <laughs> Love me some tear and tape. Um, the thing with these is they're not completely flat. Like, they look like but there's a bit of a divot. Um, so the tear and tape... Um, it might work, but I like to put I like to put the white glue on because then I can I'm putting a little bit on the edge because I don't want it to ooze out too much. And then I'm going to be generous in the middle um, because when I when you see when I push it down and I eyeball everything. You could measure this, but you know where's the fun in that? You can see the glue oozing out in between. I tried to get the label off, but this label was being stubborn, so I gave up because it really doesn't matter. So I'm pushing in the middle here. And that's what's smushing my glue everywhere, um, just to get that contact with the base. So I'm going to do this first, so that I have a little bit of a chance to let it dry. Now, if you are doing um, something like this, it's the same general idea. We're going to do two at once, because I have two ideas for decorating. So let's see which let's see which one works. And I really should have made one of these ahead of time so that when I went to do my live in a dust for a thumbnail, I actually had a picture to put there of an actual project. But I didn't because I never even thought of it. Because they're that easy that I didn't I didn't make it ahead of time. Um, okay, so we are going to center that one now. And this one oozed out a little bit. More so on the middle than on the side because I was being generous again. But that's okay because it's going to dry clear and we're going to cover it up anyways. So while we give this just a second to sit off to the side here... I'll slide that out of the way. This, and it, so, like I said, this is whichever size circle. This one's three and a half. This circle, uh, about three and a quarter. So whichever one. Now, I have dies. <laughs> I have lots of stuff in my craft room. Uh, this is about the same size. Um, if you don't have dies, though, any circle's going to work. I also don't have scrap piece of paper because that'd be too easy. Mm. Okay, seriously. <laughs> I just, I was winging it as I decided, hey, there's, you know, here's the cheater way to do it. Um, and I don't have this piece of paper anymore. So let's just go to our trusty notebook. Um, 
So with any one of these, you could just do this and uh, trace the circle. You could trace the inside of the circle, trace the outside of the circle, cut it out, and you would have it. And it's not going to really matter if it's not exactly as like clean of a shot as the as the dies make it, um, especially if you're doing something like the steampunk where you're going to rough it up a little bit. So we've picked our circle. And then what we have here is a two inch strip of paper that is eight and a half inches long. And the reason when I when I made these the first time, it was a lot of just trial and error. I had seen a picture, but I hadn't seen any actual instructions. So then I just started winging it. But it works with the eight and a half inch strip because you can this is like the width of a piece of cardstock, right? So you can get five of them out of one piece of paper. So when I tried it, it worked. There's a bit of overlap and it worked just fine. So if you were making these much bigger, you'd obviously have to start with a bigger base, but if you had a bigger whatever container you were using, this is going to have to be longer. You're likely going to be limited by 11 inches, right? Because that's the length of the cardstock. That's the biggest dimension, or if you had 12 by 12. I don't think I would make this out of DSP. I think you need the little bit stronger um, the structure of of cardstock so I wouldn't I wouldn't try that so you're probably limited to like 11 inches whatever that will go around you do not need a whole bunch um, you just need to be able to get well in my case because like I said I, I love me some tear and tape uh, you just need to get about a quarter inch of overlap is all you really need so what I did here and I do this just because I don't know. It's how I like it. Um, I don't want to have a little gap in this corner. So I put I put a full string of tear and tape. And then I just peeled this back a little bit. And I put another piece underneath. So that even when I glue this down, I can pop that up at the end. So I'm going to do this one. So what we're going to do is just... And, and you would have done this before you glued it down if you were using a different size. But I happen to know that this works. So this is basically what we're going to do. We're going to start. We're going to wrap it around. And we're going to glue it at the end. So we want to take, with zero fingernails, we want to take our little strip off here. <laughs> with my, my, uh, <laughs> my pick your nose tool, as I like to call it. My take your pick tool, because otherwise I have no fingernails to get it. And this is, this is going to be the back, right? The seam's always going to go at the back. So if there's anything on your paper, on your whatever, that makes that matter, put it at the back. So... When you go to put this down, you're lining it up right on the paper. So I'm just going to put it down, and I find it easier to do it on a table, because then you can push down as you go. So as I go, I'm just pushing this cardstock into the table, and I'm wrapping it around. And the, the tear and tape is hitting the side of the little plastic container. Now you could use glue for this, but I just feel like glue would be super messy. And like I said, I like tear and tape, and it works. So I've gotten just about to the end, and I didn't take this piece off initially, because um, if I do, I don't, if I, I don't want to accidentally stick it to the when I'm not ready. So I wait till the very last minute, and then I'm wrapping this around. And then the only thing you want to do here is make sure when you're doing it, and I guess this is if you're picky like me, make sure when you go to do this that you've lined the top up even. Right? I did it the one time and. And I kind of came in at an angle, so there was a little bit of a lump here. And so I did try to trim it with scissors. But you know how when you trim, it's not so accurate. It drove me nuts that it was not even. So there we go. We have a hat. <laughs> now, the one thing I did the one time, and I didn't do it this time, is um, if you really want to. So you can see in the bottom of this, you can see like the back side of the label. So if you want to, and I've, I have forgotten what circle size it was, but it was like a two-inch punch, I think is what it was. Whichever size fits in there, if you want, yeah, that's about two and a quarter. So if you wanted to, you could like punch out a, a green circle. This is, uh, I used shaded spruce, by the way, I guess I could have told you that. I was I was looking at all my numerous greens and I decided shaded spruce was leprechaun color. Uh, but you could punch out a little two inch circle and glue it on the bottom and then you wouldn't see the kind of the messy bit of the label and stuff. But because people are going to look at the outside of the hat and the candy in it, I uh, I never did that. So there we go. That was how easy it was to get that on. Um, we'll do it on this one too. I should I should do it two ways and try with the glue, but really, oh what the hell? Let's do. Oops, I shouldn't swear. Um, let's do it with the glue and see how it works. I don't know if I've ever actually done it with glue. I think I have only ever made these hats with 
um, tear and tape. Okay. Well, same theory applies. We're going to wrap it around. And this one is probably going to overlap more because it's a slightly smaller base. Oh, yeah, it's going to overlap a lot more. That's okay. So in this case, I'm just going to do this. And I'm going to hold it and put the glue on at the very end. And because I have so much overlap, I'm going to put the glue in a little bit deeper. There we go. So it is... Ooh, that's a lot of glue. Let's just... Um, Let's just do a little cleaning there to get rid of some of that before it all comes squirting back out again. This is what scraps are for. Scraps, and as you may have just noticed, my pant leg. There we go. Okay, so the only, and one of the things, I guess one of the reasons I shy away from the white glue um, for everything is, because uh, you do need to give it a second. Maybe I'm just too impatient to wait. Because I feel like if I just let go of this right away, that it's not going to stay. And yes, I do have glue all over my fingers now, which is why I don't tend to do that. Okay, so we're making that one second. Oh, the, this one is so cute. The little, the slightly smaller size, I love it. And and really, uh, if you're trying to pick which size you want to make, I think it would really depend on what you were trying to put in them. I did go looking for chocolate coins. Um, you know what I mean? Like the little gold coins with the tin foil on the outside that have chocolate on the inside. And <laughs> that was not an easy search. And then I went to the internet, I went to Amazon to look, but I, I just needed enough to put in, I mean, I was going to make this for about four people, but, um, but I could get like packages of 500 of them or individual bags. And most of them were meant to be more, I think Gelt is the right pronunciation for like Hanukkah coins, as opposed to St. Patrick's. Because that's why I thought this would be cute, like full of gold coins, right? But that did not work. So we do have a substitute. So once you've figured out what it is you're going to put in here, that really would decide what, what size you're going to do. So this one has probably dried enough. So what we're going to do now is I have another strip, conveniently enough, also eight and a half. Um, and this one's only a half an inch wide, though. And I made both of mine out of black. Um, when I made it on the snowman, made them out of red. Uh, I guess it just... You could make white ones, you could do whichever. Um, I'm going to put this little bit of tear and tape here. Uh, <laughs> because I know how messy I am with the glue, I'm only going to use it where I have to. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. What am I going to do with my paper? So what I want to do with this is I'm going to put a little black belt around him. And again, this is the back. So I'm going to, I'm going to make all my joints in the back so that the front looks pretty. So I'm going to make a little black band on here and then I want to put a gold buckle on it so if you're a hoarder <laughs> such as myself and let's face it a lot of a lot of um, crafters are hoarders and we keep all our stuff forever um, you might have some of these fun retired um, square punches now I happen to have the two that are um, like postal stamp shape with the little edge which I absolutely love but here's the trick if you want to make a belt with a hole in the middle Stamp the little guy first. So go well into the piece of paper, as far as this little punch will let you go, and stamp out your middle part, and then line up your outside part. It is much easier than trying to cut the big square and then cut a little square out of the middle of it. It is so much easier to do the little one first. So I have a buckle now, and then I can put this just over top, and this turns out to be the perfect size. Um, if you do not have punches, and I'm always oh, Mary watching, I don't know if she is. Every time I take this out, I feel bad because I know how badly Mary wants one of these, wants one of these little cutters. Uh, and yes, I'm a rebel. I took my little safety guard off mine. Um, if all else fails, this is this is the other cheat. <laughs> so uh, how big is this square? I don't even know. It's probably an inch, inch and a quarter. And it really doesn't matter. It just so happened that when I tried it, it seemed like that was the right size. So I can make my inch and a quarter buckle. And then I can make a half an inch square. See, the guide was in the way of me sticking my fingers this close to the blade. Which is <laughs> what I... Right, so maybe that maybe that's, there's a reason that guide was on there. But So the cheater way is just to make the two squares. And then... Oops, I cut, sorry, I cut the, square, the second square out of the wrong color. 
and I don't have a scrap with me. So <laughs> I'll just yell from over here. Let's try that again. <laughs> so we made I made my inch and a quarter buckle. Sorry, my my little square was supposed to be out of uh, out of black. And I realize that I'm gonna have lots of room in this one, so I'm just gonna cut it out of this. Because that very quick hey, I'll grab a piece of cardstock. Yeah. It turned out to be navy blue, which is not going to cut it. <laughs> okay, so this one is the shorter one. I'm going to put this over top of here so I remember that. So the other cheater way to do it then is just to cut this and just cut a little black square so that it looks like there's a buckle there. <laughs> and if you want to get even even uh, fancier, again, I have lots of empty glue, uh, glue dot rolls because I love glue dots. Uh, put a couple glue dots on it. We'll center it in the middle. Oops, that's not even close to the middle. It's because my hands are in the way of what I'm doing. There we go. And the glue dots give it just enough lift. You can't really see that. The glue dots give it just enough lift that uh, it, it almost looks like, you know how when you go through a buckle, how it kind of bows up a little bit? That's kind of what it looks like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put just a little piece of tear tape on the back. And I'm going to put this in place um, once I have it on my hat so I know exactly where the center is. And these guys, I'm just going to put little, like I said, love me tear and tape. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to, and I, you know, I do this every time I start to do it, then I realize you actually need just a minute here. <laughs> You actually need two pieces of tear and tape, and I, every time I do this, I forget which side I'm putting it on. Put them both on the same end, that's why I was going to do it backwards. Okay, so we're going to put a little piece of tear and tape on either end. I'm going to take off one to start with. Same thing, I'm going back to where the seam is. And in this case, and whether there's like, I don't know, physics, science, something to it or not, but it always seems to me that if I take this and I put it over top of the seam, that will just help give me a stronger seam. If you put them all going the same direction, it probably wouldn't matter. But I go kind of against the grain over top because I feel like that's going to help seal it. And don't do what I just did. And so with the with the snowman hats, it's a good thing. With the snowman hats, I did put them right flush with the bottom. In this case, though, we have a buckle. So don't do what I did. Don't put it right flush to the bottom. Uh, go up, I don't know, quarter inch, and do the same thing because then you will have room for your buckle. Because if not, your buckle's not going to fit. So we're going to wrap our hat around. Uh, if you really wanted to, I think you could you could put extra adhesive to uh, like in the middle or whatever to keep it from moving. But I think once they're glued down, it's not going to. So then we'll take our second tab off. Oops, it's sticking to me. And we're just going to fasten them up at the back. All right. So once this is done, then we move on to the front, and all the all the seams and everything are in the back, so nobody sees them. Ta-da! And then, because I already have this one going, take these little guys off. Now, I did not actually grab, we have a, one of the current stamp sets actually says Lucky Me in it. Um, so you could just, put, even just to make a little tag that says Lucky, but I did not actually grab it ahead of time. So you can put a sentiment on or not. Okay, so then in this case, this is, my seam is right here in the back. So I'm just kind of flipping forward, so I'm looking straight at it. And I'm going to tape my buckle down. And I'm putting the I'm putting the adhesive on on the like on the vertical, not on the horizontal, because the hat does start to curve. And this way, the buckle is kind of standing away from it a bit. Uh, it's just aesthetics. I don't think it matters. But look at that leprechaun hat. Now we can do the same thing here. We'll do it really quick, and then I'm going to show you my thoughts on decorating I'm trying to keep these little uh these little videos to a half an hour <laughs> we won't we won't count the half an hour of uh, frustration with technology we'll just pretend like this worked like it was supposed to and it was a half an hour now in this case it was it's possible i should have made a smaller buckle but that's okay this is a uh this is a well-to-do leprechaun with he's showing his bling in the size of his buckle <laughs> Oh, yeah, I amused myself. Okay, we're gonna wrap this guy around. 
it is still a little bit uh, wet on the back of this one where I put a little bit too much glue. Um, but that's okay. It'll dry by the time it matters. And then we're going to pop this guy off. So, and this is what I meant. So my glue goes like this. So I'm, I'm keeping the vertical. Once again, I'm, I'm sort of landmarking the back. And I'm keeping the vertical because I find it sits better that way. Instead of trying to make it go around the curve. It will go around the curve. The adhesive's strong enough. Um, but I just, I kind of like the way it looks this way. So, ta-da! So there we have it. We have our two hats. Now, this one was easy. And I think, I think every one of these I made, I'm a fan of the sprig. Um, I think every Christmas one I made, I put a sprig on. And I put some kind of little sentiment. Some I didn't put sentiments on at all. And then something. Some of these are red, gold, right? So for the most part, it was, you know, sprig and berry. But I figured, no, 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 we're, we're leprechauning it. So, you know, if I, if I had another empty, um, here, this one's not empty, but I'll show you why these things are super handy. Because you can use them to hold things. See? It holds my hat. Keeps it from rolling all over the table. And that is my glue dot roll. Okay, so my thought with these was, where'd my little guy go? There we go. Um, that we can make little four-leaf clovers. So I'm just picking some DSP, and uh, I'm going to shoot these all over my office and then see if I can find all four of them in the end. Oops. <laughs> it's a good thing the TV doesn't go the full, or the video cam doesn't go the full way as you see me trying to recover the hearts from my chest. Um, okay, so I need a little scrap. In this case, I'm going to use this piece of glue that I took out because we're not going to see it anyways. I'm going to cut a little strip. I'm going to find my tear and tape. Um, it's funny. Uh, I do like I do like tear and tape, and I will use tear and tape on cards, on layers, on whatever. Um, but it is also one of the better ones for doing 3D projects. So today's going to be an advertisement for tear and tape. Brought to you by Stampin' Up. Okay. So I still have glue on my finger, so everything is sticking to it. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to make a little four-leaf clover. And I'm just... I'm just taking four little hearts, because they look like clover leaves. Um, I think I... Yep, I did. I, fl I flipped the DSP on the one of them. That's okay. So I made me a four-leaf clover. Which... Needs a little gold bling in the middle, I've decided. I didn't plan for that. So, talking about hoarding. Yes, this would be my bling box. Of um, many, many, many um, packages and containers of embellishments. Ooh, I love these ones. These metallic ones. Oh, my goodness. They are so pretty. What are they called? Brush metallic adhesive dots. There is a copper, it's copper, pewter, and gold in here. And they are gorgeous. So we're going to take this nice big gold one into the middle and pop him in the middle of our four-leaf clover. And then... Oh, I was going to say, what did I do with my glue dots? Use them to hold this up. So I'm just going to pop a glue dot on this. So my one thought for decoration was to oops, just pop a little clover here like he's got it tucked into his hat. Oh, that glue dot is really sticking to the back of my... I'm trying to tuck it up under there, thing, but I got it stuck to one of my pedals. There we go. So I'm just going to... Ta-da! <laughs> so that was one idea. Thank you, Coral. So, oh my goodness, that's so cute. And and because I put it on this this piece of cardstock, um, it's kind of sticking out, so it's it's even more 3D. So that's adorable. If I just do it myself. And then my other thought was, and I hadn't fully formed this thought... <laughs> But somehow these rainbows, and again, I don't have the dies, so maybe it would work better with the dies if the dies were, you can get like much longer dies coming out of them. Yeah, it doesn't really work to put them there. Um, but, <laughs> seriously, I hadn't thought this out. I thought of this, I was, I was cleaning up the supper dishes. We had the most delicious dinner tonight of chicken done in the crock pot, which, oh my goodness, it was so good. And um, as we're going, because what I was trying to find, in addition to the gold coins... I was trying to find 
rainbow candy. <laughs> like something rainbowish. Oh, see, that kind of works too. So all I did was kind of slid in it and I, I hung it on the, kind of hung it over top of it. I figured there's a way to make it work. Um, so it's sort of the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It's kind of cute. Like I said, if I had the dies, which um, I do plan to get them, I just don't have them yet. They, I know they have the bigger kind of curving ones. I think I would just put them out coming out the back. Um, but yes, I was trying to find rainbow candy. So I thought they'd be like the strips, the chewy fruit strips or something like that. Uh, and that's what made me think of it. Because I was thinking, okay, I don't have rainbows. What else can I put in here? Um, and then it made me think actual rainbows. So yes, these don't look as good from the top. <laughs> so I went to our little dollar tree here in Mournville. And got some... Oh, I didn't realize they had writing on the back. Let's see what it says. It says, four leaf clover for good luck. Oh, there we go. So I figured... That, like I said, I, I really wish these were the, the chocolate ones, but I, I didn't find chocolate ones. But I figured if nothing else, they would fill up. Um, so, how about let's do it a different way. We'll put those in after. Um, but they'll fill up around it and make it look like that. So, I love me a jelly bean. Ooh, I love jelly beans. So this is what I figured. Instead of putting hot chocolate in them, you could just, you know, find other candies to stick in them. And then load it up with a few of these coins. Uh, and if you needed to, you could just crush up a bit of um, tissue paper or whatever to kind of fill it so the coins were kind of sticking out of the hat. Um, it's unfortunate. i got to keep turning them this way. Just a sec here. We're just going to use this tissue. I'm, I'm trying to turn them without, without dumping them. <laughs> so if you had whatever kind of candy you were... Oops, just a minute. Whatever candy you were putting in them... And then some gold coins sticking out. That would work. I also figured... I <laughs> really should have opened these up ahead of time. Um, that if you can't get gold coins, you could get you know, maybe the adult equivalent of gold coins and get little gold balls of goodness and put in Ferrero Rochers. So I'm thinking in this, this little dude here with the... Uh, with the rainbow on him, he's not as. Oh well, yeah, you can still get, you can still cram three of them in there. So this one, he's hanging out a little bit, but I bet you, I'll just, I'll just keep dumping things out on my desk here and making a mess everywhere. I bet you, if you put, you could probably get three of these in here, and they wouldn't be constantly feeling like they were going to fall out. Yes, you could. We'll even put a rainbow there. <laughs> so whichever way you decide to do it, uh, this works. See, th it's funny because this is this one's a little too small. And this one's a little too big for three of these. So, um, go back to the original plan. You, three of them will fit in here. It just feels like, if, if depending on what you're doing with them, it feels like the top one always feels like it wants to fall out. <laughs> I don't, I can't wedge it. Oh, well, there we go. All right. A little brute force. How about that? Ta-da! It looks like it's full of goals. <laughs> oh, rainbow belts. That's an awesome idea. Well done, Coral. Yeah, see, this is it. I figure once it comes time to decorate... Oops, I keep going off screen. Once it comes time to decorate, there's probably all sorts of things you can do with them. I, I got as far as the hat and then thought, oh, what am I going to do with the hat now? <laughs> but, yeah, I'd love to see. If you guys want to make some, make some and post your pictures because it would be awesome to see what other kind of hats or things we could make out of them. And I'm going to try some... I'm going to try some more things. And if anybody, uh, anybody knows where I can find those gold coins that are chocolate on the middle please let me know i don't need a million of them i just need enough to fill like i said four of these hats for my four peeps and um i mean the, like i said i can put the plastic ones in but people like chocolate <laughs> oh, thanks Jen. yeah these are fun like so i i um i've made a ton of these so if you ever notice on our on our team page that if i say hey anybody's got any empty embellishment containers i'll take them it's because i make these i don't think i make anything else with them but but I have made a ton of these little Christmas hot chocolate things. Um, the one convention we went to, I made them, and instead of putting hot chocolate in them, I did the same thing. I just put a cellophane bag with different um, candies in them. Bulk Barn. Oh, I always forget about Bulk Barn. There's a Bulk Barn in um, in St. Albert, too, nice and close, so I'll try that. Alrighty. Oh, oh you know what else I was going to try? I was trying to go with things that were gold, and I couldn't even find candy in a gold package. But I found an orange package. Which, which 
and I realize it's stereotypical, but it made me think of the when they when they draw leprechauns, they always make their beards super orange. <laughs> so I thought, if nothing else, find some Maynards. These are fuzzy peaches, and um, they're a little bit bigger bag too, so they fill up. So that one's actually cute. The orange really does good to go with it. So there we go, leprechaun hats. <laughs> it's so much fun. Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for joining me for my adventure. Um, <laughs> I especially thank you for hanging in there and um, waiting through all the technical difficulties till I actually showed up. i got to figure out a better way to do this. When I use my overhead camera, you can't see things the fun way. So, thanks everyone. I will be back on uh, Tuesday with... Oh, I'll give you a sneak peek. How about that? I, w I wanted to come up with a different name just because of what's going on in the world and I thought the idea of having an explosion card seemed like a bad idea but I have not come up with another name and that is in fact what they are called so maybe I'm just overthinking that um, I also can't get the lid on my glue that's what distracted me there we go so this is what we're going to be making on Tuesday explosion cards doo -doo -doo -doo. and why are they called that? because <laughs> that's why so there's your sneak peek We'll be making those on Tuesday. Uh, that's at 3 on Tuesday. Um, in the meantime, I will be uh, anxiously awaiting you all to post pictures of all the cute little leprechaun hats you made and how you decorated them. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Have a great night and a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Take care.